everybody and welcome back. welcome back to LS's Lego Garage. In today's video, we are going to take a look at my very first V twin engine. This is, I will put it out, put a disclaimer in there right now, this is not my original design. This is actually KF Plus Lego Mastery's design as far as I know. He did the tutorial on this, I followed his tutorial. For the most part, I made my own intake manifold, I made um, some, of, some of my own customization, such as I raised the height of it. I also, this is my own design, is, as you can see, it's got a counterbalance crankshaft. As you can see, it works pretty good. It's not very wobbly. And obviously it's going to be a little bit wobbly since it's not even, since the forces are not even on this. But that's a V-twin for you. So, as or any V engine, I suppose. But um, as you can see, it's got a giant intake, like massive, so that we can fill up all fill all of that instead of needing to slope downwards like KF pluses. Granted, I'm sure I have some efficiency losses in here because it's more open space. Although I think it just allows for it to free flow better. I do have a gasket on here. Let me take it off, and I'll show you right now. I've got a little gasket right there as well as a sticker. This has a piece with a sticker right there so that way it can um, help seal a little bit better I suppose. But yeah, it's got a gasket on here. I have not put gaskets on here because I don't think they're necessary since I have one on this side. I might add those one day, but for now I'm going to do the video on this and I might add them when I make it into a V6, which is my next goal. As you can see, I just got done filming the video for my inline six, but um, yeah, this is the V twin. Very very smooth. It's got semi-transparent cylinder wall, and which I'll be the, I'm the first to do that as far as I know. But uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna get. Anyways, like I said, let's get to running this video. Or let's get to running this engine and get on with the video. Hope you enjoy it. throttle also as a side note anything that was above about 2500 rpm anything that was like 2800 or 3000 or even 4000 it showed on the tachometer is a false reading i think it's reading a glare on some of these pieces or something from where i have all those lights shining on it so please ignore those i am not hacking the tachometer trying to get higher numbers this engine typically runs at about i don't know 15 anywhere from idling at 1500 
to revving to about 2500 somewhere in that range so it's pretty good pretty fast engine but i know for a fact it's not going more than 3000 rpms so anyways let's get back to it run without it a throttle <laughs> As you can see it revs incredibly high very 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 fast engine and it has tons of torque i mean tons so see so see it runs very well so now i am going to put the, the smaller or uh, smaller i'm gonna put this larger flywheel on it and hope we can get even higher rpms i believe i did last time i had a larger flywheel on it i think it ran way faster but like I said though, without a flywheel, I mean, it's tremendously smooth, like no force to do that. So that counterweight really does help. I will, I recommend that to anybody. I had never used a counterweight before this engine and I can't recommend having a counterweight on it enough. It definitely improves RPMs a lot and overall stability of the engine, it just improves it tremendously. But I mean, look at that. That's just so smooth. And I haven't oiled this engine in a long time, so. Yeah. Also, as a side note, I ran this engine without lubrication for a long time, and I was measuring at the tachometer, running about 2200 RPM redline, but when I added the uh, oil to it, instant 2500 RPM, so like easy with a tachometer, or uh, measured with the tachometer. But uh, I'm going to run it just straight, I'm, I'm going to run it with the throttle first. So that way you can see just kind of how well how the throttle response is on it. Then I'm going to run it with the, the without a throttle. So we'll, have, we'll just have to see. Hope you enjoy.
see it runs very well. Now I will put a smaller, slightly smaller flywheel on it. I'll actually just change the rubber on this one, or the tire on this one, and show you that it can really redline really well. So this is also going to be one of the last, well, the last time you see this engine as a two-cylinder because I plan to make this into a V6. So hope you enjoy that as well. But uh, now I'll see this thing really rev. we had a wow we had a um, camshaft fail wow that's a first for me as you can see this uh, retainer for the camshaft popped loose as well as this whole thing so let's take it off I am not tampering with this and wow exploded the camshaft look at that didn't permanently damage it thankfully but wow Never seen that happen. It's even left this white dust on the uh, on the bearings for it. That's pretty wild. I've never seen that happen before. Nobody that I know of has ever done that. That's pretty crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah. As you can see, just without the valves, this thing is tremendously smooth. But I think that was pretty good. But. I'm gonna take the timing chain off so you can really see without a chain on this thing. Listen, look at that. Anyways, as you can see, it's a very, very smooth engine. Uh, not much more I can say about it, but I'm going to turn this into a V6. So, uh, yeah, to stay tuned on the channel. I'll see you next time. LS out. Bye.